Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online community for people who are curious, want to learn new things and improve themselves in different ways. It includes classes on numerous topics, including guitar playing and music production. 10 things holding you back as a guitar player and what to do about them. Hello and welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karjalainen, and it's good to have you along. You can call me this guy if my name is tricky to pronounce. Today we're taking a look at 10 things that probably or maybe are holding you back as a guitar player. And I've been, <laughs> these are things that have sometimes held me back as a guitar player. So I'm hoping to help you progress faster and further with this video. Without further ado, here is number one. You're not setting goals. This is a big one. Uh, I see this as a teacher all the time. Uh, actually, when I get new students, I ask them, what do you want to play on the guitar? And if I get a kind of answer that I don't know, I get a bit worried. It usually doesn't lead to much. So set a big goal and then you divide that into smaller goals. And the big goal can be anything. I want to be the next Brian May and then you set uh, smaller goals accordingly. What does Brian May do? Well, he bends the strings, that's one thing. Then you have a smaller goal. He has nice vibrato. There's another thing to work on. Small goals, yes. Big goal, smaller goals. Not having a goal is kind of like going sailing um, without anywhere to go. Since you just sail around wherever. It can be fun but you won't get as far as if you know where you're going and then you actually go there. <laughs> Number two, very much uh, simpler, smaller one, this one, you're holding the pick wrong. This was something that held me back, way back in the day, and uh, I had a substitute teacher who asked me, what do you want to play? And I said, I want to play like Gary Moore. And he said, okay, show me something. And I showed him something and I probably dropped the pick and I was holding it really loosely. And he said, okay, first things first, hold the pick like this. And then he showed me, you uh, make this. Let's, let's me, let me get into that frame there. Uh, hold your hand like that. Put the pick on the finger like so, roughly. And then you should have that kind of a thing, roughly. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I'll take a picture of this. So you have a steady grip and that's that was for me kind of my starting point so i don't hold i don't actually hold the pick like that anymore but i've it's evolved into something that i'm very comfortable with and i don't keep dropping the pick these days and yeah it's way better now than it was then so chances are you might be holding the pick wrong that being said i mean there is no such thing as wrong if you're comfortable with it i've seen very good guitar players. Uh, I think Matthias E.I. Eklund might hold his pick with the middle finger, which is totally alien to me. But yeah, see to it that you're, <laughs> you have a good grip on your pick. Before we go on, I'd like to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. They have plenty of material out there, both for beginner and intermediate guitar players, such as Music Theory 101 by Henry Olsen, which looks very useful. There's over five hours of material in there, so there should be plenty you can learn, even if you're an intermediate guitarist. Personally, I've been looking at Filmmaking for All, Tell Your Story Through Video by Don Mace to improve the content on this channel and it's very interesting stuff which has given me ideas and food for thought. So there's plenty of stuff there, not just guitar playing. The first 1000 people to use the link in my description box or my code Elmo Karjalainen will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so be sure to check that out down below. Number three. Well, I kind of mentioned this already. Your bends and your vibrato are off. Now, even accomplished guitar players have trouble with this. Sometimes I hear all sorts. <laughs> it's not always nice. And it's surprisingly difficult, actually. So, for some odd reason, my students tend to fall into one of two categories. Either they have difficulty with bends or they have difficulty with vibrato. Usually not both, which is weird. 
So get your bends sorted. Just quickly, one exercise that you can do for that is the Paul Gilbert exercise, where you don't have to actually hit a note like that. Um, but you bend the string and then you play. That's one way to work on those bends, and then you do other stuff like... If you want to check out a more detailed explanation of how uh, I do bends, uh, I have that stuff in my Guitar Academy. There's a link in the description to my Patreon, you get access that way. Number five, you're not transcribing stuff. I would say your ears are probably <laughs> your most important tool when playing, apart from your fingers. Transcribing is a great way to develop your ears, get better relative pitch, and that's so important. So yeah, transcribe stuff if you want to uh, progress faster. That was number four, I think. So now it's number five. I think I misspoke. You're not measuring your progress. Measuring progress is easy if you're doing uh, speed-based exercises, stuff that requires a metronome or there, where you can use a metronome. So something like... It makes it so much more enjoyable when you do it with a metronome and you notice that you're actually making progress. You're going from this beat per minute to that beat per minute. Uh, it, from personal experience, I'm f at least for me, it's like day and night. I can't be bothered with exercises like that uh, unless I measure my progress. Well, the problem is that speed isn't very interesting to most guitar players. I, I mean, I like playing fast. Uh, lots of people do like shredding as it were but there are lots of players who don't so how do they measure progress and how, how do we measure progress when it comes to something else apart from speed because even us shredders we need to slow down occasionally no we don't you record yourself record yourself I've been lucky in that my dad uh, has had a studio a recording studio all of my life so I've been able to record myself way way before the advent of mobile phones uh, on a fairly regular basis and it's given me something where I've measured my progress I didn't really think about it as such back then but I was gave me new stuff to work on okay that I'm not happy with that I'm gonna work on that and so on uh, and these days when you have mobile phones I mean you can just you you let's say you're practicing those bends and it sounds like it sounds like not very nice. Whatever. You practice Parisian walkways. You do it every day and you record yourself one week and then you practice a week and you record yourself the next week and the next week you record yourself again. And over time you will notice the progression there. And that will give you added motivation. And it's, I mean, measuring progress because you have that goal and you're measuring progress so great. I mean, it just works. I mean, really. Okay, then we have number six. You're not learning licks. Learning licks is brilliant. Uh, it gives you added vocabulary on your instruments and it can be any old licks. And I've talked about this in other videos. But learning licks is brilliant and you can do that same measuring progress thing with licks. So I've uh, recently, I got bored with this and so on because I hit my kind of, well, I'm happy with that speed. So I started doing other stuff. Uh, that's something I'm working on. Uh, Not quite there yet. Uh, I did Paul Gilbert's this one. Uh, I've been doing that, but I've also been doing a, a reverse kind of version of it. Uh, 
just for a couple of days now. Uh, but yeah, that's stuff I can actually use in my playing when I get them kind of <laughs> nailed down. So, learn licks. Number seven, you're not uh, practicing uh, a wide enough variety of stuff. Uh, I think it's important to, uh, at least in the beginning, kind of stick to your goal so it's not you're not all over the place. But being musically diverse is equally as important, or it is at least important. And you're just practicing the same old stuff again and again, and kind of that means that you're eventually going to be stuck in a rut. So practicing different types of things, different styles of music, uh, can be extremely beneficial to you. And I've done this on occasion myself, where I've just kind of stuck to whatever Steve Vai or whatever I've been stuck to at the time. Uh, and practicing something different has really helped. Number eight. You're not playing with other people. That's really important. You should play with other people. I know. It's not possible for everyone because you might live in a place where there's no one uh, around who plays a, an instrument. It might be that you're the only metal guy in town and everyone else likes dubstep or whatever. And yeah, I know, that sucks. But at least play over backing tracks or stuff like that because that that means at least some kind of interaction, at least you're interacting with pre-recorded music. Uh, even better if you're playing with other people because you're, you'll are you be interacting uh, in the moment and it's so brilliant. I mean, just jamming can be so much fun. So, that's something that might be holding you back. You're not playing with other people. Number nine, you haven't learned your theory. Now, uh, I personally don't think that theory is necessarily something you need to do. It depends on what kind of music you play and what you want. Um, but for me, something that's really helped me was learning the modes. And I had a teacher who really saw to it that I learned the modes. And those have been so helpful for me in my day-to-day -day playing when I because I basically improvise everything. So putting down the effort to learning the modes is definitely valuable stuff and learn them this way as well, not just that way because you don't want to get stuck in that box. <laughs> so, learning your modes is a great way to progress. And again, you can set goals here. Uh, I will learn one mode a week or whatever. And the last one, and uh, this, I think there are three really big ones in this video. The first one was setting goals, the second one was measuring progress, and the third one is you're not focused when you practice. Put your phone in the other room, uh, or put it in flight mode, uh, turn off notifications at least, because you don't want to be distracted. You want your uh, practice time to be as effective as possible. And I would say quality beats quantity. Uh, in the beginning, you won't be able to practice in an intensely focused manner for uh, a very long time. That's something you have to build towards. But I think... Uh, one ex-soccer player, football player for us Europeans, uh, said it best when he was asked, he's been a coach as well, uh, which is the best uh, training drill that you ever did uh, as a footballer? And he thought a while and he said, actually, it makes no difference which one it is as long as you do it properly. And I, th I think that's extremely true. So focus if you can make sure that you're not disturbed because that means that you can get into that flow and everything will be so much better when you're in that flow state if you're constantly uh, interrupted by your mother saying little jimmy it's time to eat <laughs> uh, or uh, whatsapp messages or uh, notifications from if you're using snapchat stop it <laughs> <laughs> just put your phone away. If you have a metronome on the phone, you need to use that. Uh, I would still recommend that you get an actual metronome or use a, uh, one from uh, on your laptop or, or download an app on your phone and just turn everything else off and just use the metronome f for that. I mean, focus. Don't get interrupted. When I was a kid, uh, 
back in the day, we had phones where the cord went into the wall and the person speaking on the other end, his voice or her voice came along the telephone line. And when I practiced, I often just unplugged the phone because I didn't want to be disturbed and it really helped. So if you want to watch more of my lessons, there is a playlist here. There's also a playlist with my music. Please check that out. If you liked the video, click like. I hope you did. Comment, let me know what you thought. If you have any other things that can help speed up progress, subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification thing and join me on Patreon. You get uh, access to all of my lessons, all of my music and uh, a bunch of exclusives. You can even take that stuff for free. There's a link in the description to that. Other than that, I hope you have a nice day. I hope you enjoyed this and have some use of it. Take care. Bye.